You did it once again. You clicked on one of my videos, dedicated your time to hear me babble about movie news? Well, let's get on to it then. Some of the things we're going to be talking about here today is one, James Gunn confirms Crypto the Superdog will appear in his Superman movie. What? We're going to be updating on the current situation with the Five Nights at Freddy's movie trailer and the aftermath of it being leaked online and when we can expect the real one, as well as even talking about some proof that the Fantastic Four could actually be a period piece. And that along with so much more, so you know the drill. Leave your opinions, timestamps in the description. Let's get on to the first story. Starting things off here, earlier in the day we were promised to get the first trailer for Meg 2, The Trench. Really cool motion poster of the Megalodon going after a little puppy. And now finally the trailer has arrived online. And look, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you guys. You know I do trailer trash. I'd honestly give this trailer a trash just cause the movie's appearing to be dumb, silly, wacky. But it also just looks like fun. I like the opening sequence of the T-Rex with the Megalodon. We're getting some sci-fi enhancements with people wearing these like super suits. And just come on, Jason Statham on a jet ski trying to pierce a Megalodon. Yeah, I, I'm gonna watch this. First movie was just fine to me. This will be something to pass the time. So although I'm gonna give this trailer trash, Yo, I don't blame anyone for being excited for this movie. Let me know what you guys thought about the trailer for The Meg 2. Bring us into our first full story here. The Writers Guild of America is still currently on strike, just asking studios for fair wages. And just like we've seen with past strikes, we knew there were going to be projects affected by them. And although several TV shows have already been affected, on the movie side of things, the MCU has now been hit. The Hollywood Reporter has it here that Marvel hits pause on Blade due to writer's strike. In the article, they basically detail while they were in the middle of some rewrites on Blade because of the strike now having it set that writers aren't allowed to continue writing, Blade is now just put on hold and man, Blade has just gone through so much. I'm hoping this movie makes it out on top and it turns out being a good film, but first you had a director being hired on, then that director got fired because they didn't like the script he turned in. That caused the movie to be delayed and start up from scratch, so they hired one writer to write a new script. They thought it was okay, so they hired another writer to tweak up that script but now it's been put on pause and i just feel bad for my harsh ali here he was really excited to be blade and i'm sure kevin feige was excited to show a new look into the mcu and what that would be like and now it's on pause until that writer strike is over currently other projects that might be affected or are not affected the hollywood reporter has it here that cat america new world order is currently filming in atlanta so that's safe agatha coven of chaos is shooting in atlanta that's safe wonder man is filming in Los Angeles, that's safe. Deadpool 3 is expected to go in front of the cameras later this month in London, so Deadpool 3 is ready to shoot, while the Thunderbolts here are getting ready to start filming in June, and that still seems on track. So those are the projects that won't be affected, but you gotta remember, if this strike is still going on while they're making these things, they can't make any changes during the filming. So if they're in the middle of filming a scene and they're like, oh, that dialogue is a little awkward or this story beat doesn't really make sense now that we're watching it live action, they can't change it. At least not with a WGA writer there. I mean, it looks like Ryan Reynolds might not even be able to improvise as Deadpool. That's something he's like really good at doing in character, but he's gonna have to strictly stay to the script and not be able to really mess around with the character. That's gonna suck. The Fantastic Four is set to start filming in January, and it looks like they're still tweaking some stuff up there, but as long as the writer's strike doesn't go on for longer than six months, they're saying they'll be okay. And I don't think it will take six months, or at least hopefully not. Even an article recently came out today that thanks to protesters on the streets they had to stop filming daredevil born again so that's even facing a little bit of delays so this really sucks all because studios really just don't want to come down to an agreement on how to pay these writers fairly but this is the whole point of the strike is hitting them when it hurts and the longer these projects are delayed the more money studios lose and then it becomes a balance sheet of how much money do we want to lose before we just want to pay the writers leave me your guys opinions on all this moving on here talking about the five nights of freddy's leak man it was an in interesting weekend to say the least. So in case you're not keeping up with the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, over the weekend we had a full leak trailer for the full trailer. It had some unfinished VFX and they decided to pull out their phone, record their computer screen, and then upload that leak trailer for everyone to see. Because this movie has been anticipated and just waited for for eight years, fans of course went crazy over the side of this trailer. I know in the original tweet where it first leaked out, I was tagged 
tagged in it, so I got to see part of the trailer right away. One, I had to watch the first 30 seconds even to know if it was legit or not. You guys send me so many fake trailers all the time. I'm like, all right, let's see if this one's even convincing. I'm 30 seconds into this thing and I'm like, oh my... This is legit. This is real. I gotta stop. And now that that's happened, it's time to look at some of the aftermath of this. So the leaker for one turned out to be just a young kid even posting an apology online that I gotta say was pretty sincere and honest with himself. I know a lot of people are bagging on this guy and going really hard on him. I do want to play like one clip of his apology. Don't let your judgment be clouded by internet clout because that is exactly what happened to me. I was thinking about the views, the subscribers, the followers, the likes, all of this and it was all for nothing. But aside from that, we also had the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's, Scott Cawthon, also put out his own statement here. Most of the fans have read his lengthy statement here. I have it up. I'm just gonna stick to reading the important aspects of it that I think tell us when we can see the official trailer. So for one, he started off mentioning how he was kind of sad to see that the trailer leaked online with all the hard work they were putting in. But then, to my surprise though, I got home and found a lot of YouTube channels refusing to do videos on it, Twitter channels refusing to repost it, countless members refusing to watch it, and moderators taking a stand against allowing discussions on it. It's really difficult, if not impossible, to prevent people from trying to spoil things for everyone else. But it was really encouraging to see the fan base pull together and push back against it. For those of you who resisted watching it, I think you'll be happier when you're able to see the finished product that is edited and polished with VFX and proper sounds. And that's right there is the part I want to stick to. A lot of us thought once the trailer leaked online and it was making the rounds, they would do what Spider-Man No Way Home had to do when that trailer leaked online. It was just posted on the internet the next day. And well, the next day came and now we're on Monday and the trailer's still not here. So people are like, like, yo, what the heck? The trailer already leaked. Might as well post the official thing. I think Scott here mentioning that I think you'll be much happier when you see the finished product that is edited, polished, VFX, and with proper sound. Meaning there really wasn't a realistic way for them to rush the making of the trailer and put it out there for people to see even though it's leaked. It's still gonna be maybe a month or a couple of weeks before we get that HD trailer. There was a part of me watching the first like 20-30 seconds that thought the trailer was fake because the font they used looked so cheap, the sound didn't exactly sound right, and now it makes sense. It definitely was an unfinished trailer. So we're not gonna get this trailer I think until like the beginning of next month. They're definitely gonna want to polish it and now they might even change the trailer completely since a lot of people have already gotten a version of the trailer they might try to do something new here i'm kind of more intrigued with some of the fan reactions because they it is split while i'll say the majority is super positive excited think the trailer looks amazing there was a good chunk of people a little disappointed saying that the trailer looked cheap or that it didn't look as high budget as they were hoping so i'll be curious to see if maybe they take any of those criticisms into account for the actual trailer so we'll just have to wait and see but for any anyone that's like man why haven't they posted the official one yet it's just not ready yet they can't rush it and they want it to look good especially since it's been leaked now when do you guys suspect we'll get the full official trailer finally released moving on here talking about the fantastic four we got an interesting little bit of detail that landed online here thanks to someone who was perusing the imdb pro of the fantastic four pro is the paid version where it kind of updates you on real time on some of the more specific people involved with the movie like the sound mixing vfx and production design and well for the upcoming fantastic four movie it's been shown that production designer dante ferretti has been added on into the movie now you guys might be like well chris why do we care about the production design here if you look at the specific oscar winning production designer they have a very specific way of designing movies looking through the resume here they've worked on movies like sweeney todd shutter island hugo aviator casino interview with a vampire the common thing you'll be seeing with this production designers work is a lot of the movies are period pieces now period pieces are usually movies that take place in a different time as opposed to our modern day so to see that marvel went out and not only got an oscar talented production designer but also someone that specifically designs the set to look like it's in a different time period this backs up some of the rumors we've been hearing about the fantastic four that it could be set somewhere early on in the mcu from like like maybe the 1920s to the 1960s. I know that's a big time frame there, 
there, but that's been the rumor is that the Fantastic Four movie will be a period piece of these people. They get their powers, they go on an adventure, somewhere by the end of the movie they get lost in the negative zone, and then they end up appearing in the modern day MCU. It could add a double meaning to the joke that Doctor Strange had in Multiverse of Madness. Hello, Steven. Didn't you guys chart in the 60s? Now that joke could also be interpreted as a hint to us getting a Fantastic Four movie in the 60s. But it could definitely be a different flavor of the MCU. Seeing a time period like that, getting an older feel, having the technology maybe be a little different. I'd be excited for it. Still, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe the production designers decide to change his career and now wants to make modern looking productions. But I toss it off to you guys. Do you think having this production designer on set backs up the theories that it could be a period piece? Moving on here, we had some interesting new details be revealed about James Gunn's upcoming Superman legacy. In a recent interview promoting Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, James Gunn was just joking around with Chris Pratt saying that he wanted him to voice Crypto the Super Dog in the movie so that he could, you know, do some of the motion capture on set and walk around like a dog. It seemed like a joke not to be taken too seriously, but then it ends like this, making it seem like it was actually a confirmation. So it sounds like there's going to be a character called Crypto in Superman, breaking news. That's a scoop for me. Yeah, <laughs> it is a scoop, I guess. Um... <laughs> Way to go. Now, James Gunn has been someone very vocal about what is and isn't in his new DCU. He'll debunk things on Twitter, and he's also not one to kind of just lie about what will be in his movies, so... Crypto the Super Dog looks to be in Superman Legacy. Now you definitely have some divide here on fans who are super excited for this and others who are like, really, this is what he's gonna do? This is why we don't need James Gunn's Superman movie. I think a good chunk of the people upset about James Gunn's Superman film are just the ones who are still salty. The old universe isn't continuing on and they're just gonna hate everything James Gunn does with Superman no matter what, even if it's an Oscar worthy 10 out of 10 movie, they're gonna call it garbage. On my personal opinion, yeah, it kind of took me back to here. Whoa, Crypto is gonna be in the Superman movie? Okay, that's different. It honestly makes me excited. James Gunn has proven that he knows how to handle a lovable animal creature. The man brought us Scooby-Doo and Shaggy when we were kids. Then King, Shark, Rocket, Raccoon, and now Superman and Crypto. I also don't think this is something to get like super worried about even if you're not open to the idea because I doubt Crypto is going to be like his sidekick in the movie or as heavily involved as he was like in the animated film. I think Crypto's involvement can be very small and minor, but just having him part of the DC universe makes it feel so much more fun and whimsical. It also shouldn't be that surprising because the Supergirl movie that's based off the comic book Woman of Tomorrow, which I've now finally read since it got announced, and I actually really like that run. Super excited to see this Supergirl movie now. Crypto the Superdog is a pretty important part of that story. It even makes me excited that whatever Batman they cast in this DCU, he'll have Ace the Bat Hound and then seeing a dog that was trained by Batman just do anything is gonna make me so happy. So honestly, I'm very excited to see how this will go. I don't think crypto is gonna be like a huge part of the movie, but just having them there is gonna be nice. If I had to take a wild guess, the movie's taking place mainly in Metropolis, where Clark is becoming a reporter for the first time, balancing his normal life with his superpower life. I think crypto's just gonna be living on the farm, basically protecting Mama Kent. And we'll see maybe a couple of scenes of Superman traveling back and forth. I don't know, this is where I throw it off to you guys. You hear crypto the super dog is involved in Superman Legacy. Are you excited? for it? Are you against the idea? Really curious to hear from you guys. But anyways, that is all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time my day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.